first of all, thank you very much for inviting me and uh, to have this opportunity to share with you uh, this research, part of the research, my P PhD research project that I'm developing together with the Sabina Di Franco. Uh, she's a researcher at the National Research Council Institute of Atmospheric Pollution Research in Rome. Uh, so it is a joint research, uh, a joint project and uh, between two institutions. First of all, I would like to to give some idea of the framework in which we are developing this project. Um, we are not focusing on disaster, the event, but we are uh, we started to think about uh, the uh, to disaster as a cycle because disaster is not an event. Usually, we talk about disasters when there is an, a major disaster or a minor disaster, but uh, disaster should be considered in our perspective as an event. So, which is uh, the framework? The framework is, uh, as you know, as we listen during all this presentation, these two days, very interesting presentation. Uh, when a disaster uh, or an event uh, struck, the information need increase, and we we see that from Web 2.0 and. Uh, uh, web uh, 1.0 and Web 2.0, uh, the information need and request from the user, from the citizens, is uh, extremely uh, increasing. So, what type of information pe people are looking for when there is a major event? Uh, we focused on our country framework, because it's, it was uh, our focus to, to develop something related to Italy. And what, I, what we did is just to a very simple search with Google Trends, and we searched for two words. One word is fault, faglia, and the other word is liquefaction. These two words are very scientific expert words, but as you can see here, I can use the this. Um, here and here, you have these two peaks in correspondence of the Abruzzo earthquake in 2009 and of the, the other major earthquake, earthquake we had in 2012. But the difference is that in Abruzzo, people were looking for fault that is a a, a very specific word when an, an earthquake strikes. And in Emilia-Romagna earthquake, they were looking for liquefaction. There was a strange phenomenon. These uh, are the words that citizens were using, uh, making videos, making pictures, and they didn't know what was, this, uh, what was it about. This very simple graph shows that people look for uh, information, also scientific information, but what they find is another problem. What is the content of the search, of the Google search? This is the reason why in that period, after two months after the earthquake, the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, that is the USGS, Italian USGS, they set up a blog a blog where they started to explain uh, what was the earthquake from a scientific point of view. What is the liquefaction? Because normally you can find only experts article that are normal people, population, are, have not the skills to understand. So. If we think about disaster as a cycle, we are aware that uh, a lot of literature uh, is about think about the day before and not only about the day after. So be prepared, uh, be informed, be prepared. But how you can be informed if uh, information is so scattered in the web and it is not uh, so easy to understand? The major effort we, we think, uh, it, the major challenge 
uh, experts, uh, academics and uh, practitioners now are facing, facing is to switch from the way they communicate disaster hazards in a way um, to switch from a very complicated and very specialistic way into a, com a real communication where people can really <coughs> understand what they say and uh, how we can do that and which are uh, the constraints normally people um, not constraint the, the mistake people can can um, can can do if we focus on disaster event our communication and if our communication is an elite communication elitarian so it is a specialistic it is not transparent it's not clear normally we can we can provoke we can have uh, a fatalistic or emotional reaction uh, think, thinking about the earthquake in Emilia Romagna people when s seeing the liquefaction that is a very normal consequence of certain type of earthquake they were really uh, they felt feared another another effect was that in that area people didn't know that it was a risky area. So not knowing, because all the uh, articles or the findings were in a scientific framework, th for them was really a shock. People in Bologna were really amazed that there was the earthquake there. But, uh, but if my, uh, if uh, as a institution, my communication is focused on <coughs> uh, self-protecting um, approaches, so how to react when there is an earthquake, what you have to do, stay at home, go away, etc. There is another effect that people are uh, tend to be uh, passive. They want people from civil protection, from institutions that come to save their lives. They are not proactive at all because they do not understand. So most of the communication we have about risk is what to do and what to do not. But why and what is happening is it's, it's not taken into account. So we think that uh, if we focus our approach on vulnerability so knowing what is the territory knowing what you have around you which are the hazard and which are the risk given the differences between the difference between hazard and risk and if the knowledge is open available and in plain language maybe you can start to build a sort of resilience against hazard so the ability to cope, to understand, and to react in the, in the better way to save your life. So what we thought it could be interesting to do, to start from the bricks of the knowledge, so from the words and their meanings. We, uh, we, uh, um, at, at the beginning, we didn't talk about ontologies, but we are talking about ontologies, because if you think about language, language is not clear, it, it is ambiguous, because in this example, mercury, if I say the word mercury, it could be four or five different things. The same if I talk about probability. If I talk about probability with a seismologist, he has a framework in which probability as is something really specific. But if I take the phrase of a seismologist and I put it in the media, in an article, in, in my language, if I say it's probable that uh, an er uh, I will come, I it's a nice way to say I will come. So people understand that the earthqu earthquake will come and they do not understand why 
if I know that it will come, I can forecast. We had a really uh, um, a great confusion about that. Uh, maybe some of you knows what happened about uh, L'Aquila earthquake and uh, about the trial, the, the scientists that have been judged in trial for the communication they did. And uh, uh, INGV, after that trial, I don't want to talk about their position about the trial, but with the um, Emilia-Romagna earthquake, they started to communicate differently. They started to say, what is probability, what is an earthquake, what is a fault, what is liquid, it's explaining with video and a great effort. But what happened in January 2013? Uh, One day uh, there was a, um, a fax was published on Facebook. The fax was from the National Department of Civil Protection and the publisher was a uh, a body, uh, a civil protection body in, uh, uh, in an area of Tuscany and the facts were saying there is uh, an, a, a strong seismic activity in Garfagnana, there is an area in the mountain in Tuscany and the publisher was saying high seismic risk, earthquake risk, please go away from your home. In this sentence and with this um, uh, act, uh, all the work of the great job that has been done to make people understand what is an earthquake, <coughs> why we don't, we we can, we are not able to forecast an earthquake, has been demolished because the Twitter feed, the Facebook feed of people were saying, so you you were uh, lying before because you can forecast an earthquake. So this. Uh, language, this uh, um, low literacy on what is a natural hazard, for us was a, uh, a topic to, uh, to study and to uh, trying to find ways to um, share knowledge about that. So we thought that we could mix two projects. In uh, 2006, I developed a wiki uh, for the previous Minister of Civil Protection. Um, it was a civil protection wiki where I started to say, okay, why we don't explain which are the procedures, which are the level of alerts, because civil protection is a, is a very complex <coughs> and multidisciplinary um, domain. So this was the first project. And then we thought that we can combine this knowledge with the thesaurus, uh, there was a uh, Earth Thesaurus, was a, a project from National Research Council, and say, why we don't put together these things? In these days, I saw a lot of, uh, a lot of um, interesting and simulating approaches and projects about that. But we were focusing on natural hazard. So we, we thought we could build an ontology, specific ontology, that can combine natural hazard knowledge and civil protection uh, procedures and processes. Defining that, when I have a term, this term have a definition, have a broader term, narrower term, relations, but this term can uh, can remind you about, for instance, legislations, because this term, for instance, earthquake, the hazard, has a uh, specific regulation. I have uh, a seismic history that I should take into account. I have the usage of this term by the institutional bodies. I have data. I have uh, geodata. And uh, in this sort of map, we would like to use this uh, kind of approach to uh, categorize, to structure the information we have. And we started with, uh, with uh, this, the other earthquake because it's quite complex and we have a lot of documentation. But our aim is to give um, 
not give a model, but just give uh, some guidelines and to say, if you publish this information, try to use ontologies, try to use, it's a methodology we want to propose. Uh, at, at present we have only, only developed, uh, we have um, uh, made the wiki, civil protection wiki alive again because uh, it was dead after three years, <laughs> so we <laughs> started to work in, uh, on it again. And we are, uh, we are trying, uh, we, are, uh, we have been using some uh, modules to semantify the wiki, but our, um, our aim is to, uh, it's a cultural aim, it's not a technological aim, it's to make people from civil protection and from academic try to understand that if the information is not categorized or structured, uh, the information will, will not be usable. And if the information is not in a clear and plain language, not simple, but clear, it's very different approach, uh, all this information will not be useful in face of disaster. It will not allow people to cope with disaster. So when I saw, I, fi I'm <laughs> I finished. <laughs> I have some, I, I have a TV <laughs> background. Uh, so when I saw the Sayed project, and uh, I was very interested because what we are proposing is, uh, is, is just finding ways to help uh, academic, public authorities, uh, experts, and media to manage information in the right way as what you were saying today. So uh, this is a very small uh, uh, a cultural approach to natural hazard and uh, I thank you everybody because uh, after this seminar I have a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, ways to, to go further to the next step of this project. So thank you. <laughs>